Melodyne. I wanted to see what you could automate with Melodyne. The reason is Melodyne's a really powerful harmonic editor, so surely automation within such an editor would be a huge plus, right? So let's take a look real quick. All right, so first, what is automatable? There's a lot of knobs here, a lot of things that we can move back and forth that look like they're automatable, but none of them are. In fact, I couldn't find a single knob on here that would let me automate it, but there is a list called the continuous controller list. This list is all the things you can automate. So if I go over to this dropdown up here and go to browse parameters, this is for FL, it's gonna be different in different DAWs, and you click it, you're going to get the CC list, the continuous controller list. Now, a lot of this list is just empty. It says stuff here, but that's just there by default. There's three things here. These are the things you're allowed to automate. So I was actually really surprised by this. There's only three things. One day this list could grow. Who knows? But for now, these are the things we have. We have a pitch automation, volume automation, and then this one's the interesting one. We also have a formance automation. So let's do something with those things. So what I did was I took those things and I automated the pitch and the formants. Now, this is my starting sound and let me show you what it sounds like without Melodyne on it. So this is just what's coming straight out of the synth. Cool, so that's what's coming out of the synth. And then we will go ahead and put Melodyne on. Now when I turn Melodyne on, it's going to play the audio I recorded into it at that time. And this is a requirement for Melodyne. You have to record it in because when you automate these things, it has to have the audio to manipulate. So automation, uh, make sure you've got your audio recorded into Melodyne in order for this thing to work. So now that we've got the audio in Melodyne, let's go ahead and do some automation things. So the first thing I'm going to automate is the formants. And let me show you the audio with Melodyne. Now, Melodyne's gonna block the synth. So we won't actually hear the synth anymore, we'll just hear the output of Melodyne because it's on an insert and so it just blocks the incoming sound and produces the sound that's already been recorded into it. So let's go ahead and hear that. Now you might be going, well that sounds really different than what you had before. The answer is yes, it's because I have a couple other things going on. So. I've got namely the formants automation and I made a couple of harmonic decisions. I've moved them just a little bit and this just changed the general timbre of the waveform. So if I move them like way up, so, so a combination of these tonal decisions is why it sounds different. I also have, if you noticed on the synth engine, I have a formants envelope and a spectrum envelope. Now the spectrum envelope is uninteresting and unimportant. So if I turn that off, actually, uh, we won't hear any difference really. There's a brief, uh, like a small one, but not really that important. This, all it does is it turns the spectral effects on and then holds them for a bit and then turns them off. And this happens at the beginning of every one of these blobs. The next one is the formants one and this happens also, but this is a formant shift. So a formant, what it is, is it's a resonant pattern in a sound. So when you speak, I can tell what you're saying when I hear you because you have these resonant patterns. And I've learned since I was a child, you know, I, I learned English and English has all these specific resonant patterns and they put them together into words. And my brain processes all of this and I can hear you talking and understand what you say. The formants is actually really, really important for that. So if you ever see like a formant filter, usually it's a filter that's got like A, E, I, O, U as like options. And then you can choose like the ah uh, sound or the ooh, like ooh, ah, uh, that's a formants. Like I'm changing my formants right there. The vowels are get a great demonstration of this. Dubstep's sort of built on this concept a lot, a lot actually. And so when we do a form and shift, we're taking those resonance patterns, which are just frequency spikes, and we're changing them. We're moving them around. And this is actually why guys sound the way they do, why girls sound the way they do. If you do a form and shift on those things, along with a little bit of pitch shifting, you can often get a girl to sound like a guy and a guy to sound like a girl. 
So we are simply doing a form and shift and we, uh, we actually start a little bit low and then it turns on and then turns off. So or brings it up and then comes down. So if I take this and off real quick. Now we're using a saw wave, a distorted saw wave, which doesn't really have any resonant spikes in it. And so the formants aren't that easily identifiable. So this acts more like sort of a filter because it affects a lot more frequencies than just those select, uh, those select ones that would typically be detected because we deliberately gave it a sound that has a very f uniform or predictable spectrum shape. So if we turn the formants on, especially right here, listen to this, this, the jump up and then going down. Let's turn that off. And now let's turn it on. It digs a little more right here too. So I really liked this. We also have an, an amplitude envelope, but those are the options as far as the envelopes go inside of Melodyne. After that, I automated myself. Now the same rules apply. This is just additional formance shifting automation. And again, it acts kind of like a filter. So I did things at particular spots of the phrase that I thought would be cool. So let's just go ahead and hear that. And after that, I went ahead and did a pitch shift. I already knew I wanted to pitch shift it down. So I recorded it higher and then I pitch shift it down. And on the ends of these notes, these longer notes, I thought it'd be cool to have them sort of get pitched up just a little bit and come back down. So the pitch shift goes down an octave and it does these funny little uh, pitch shift rises. In fact, if you can even see that, it's very, very small on the automation, but it makes a pretty noticeable impact. So let's hear it. And after this, we can actually hear Melodyne doing its processing on the formants a little more clearly, especially on this drop right here. So let's just hear it without this envelope. The beginnings of the notes also are a little lost, so this helps to define them a little bit more as well, just this change. Man, this is wow, wow. Like, this the combo of the formants plus the pitch shift right there is really nice. And then here you can hear, it goes up a little bit, but barely anything. And then it settles right back down. And so those really add just an extra dimension to those notes. And that's pretty much all that we did with Melodyne. The rest is all post and just sort of filling out the ideas so I could get a feel of where I wanted to go. So for example, we have, I added some bass back because the sound I recorded, the saw wave didn't really have any bass. And so this is just a plugin that put bass back in. And then we have a distortion and then a stereo shaper. Putting all those things together and I automate the stereo shaper so that we're a little more mono in the middle of the phrase here, which I thought sort of worked musically. And then here, as we're digging into that low note along with the little pitch bend, we also get very wide, which I thought was cool. And then the rest is a saxophone and some drums. So the only thing I would need to be aware of if I plan to build out a track like this is when I change this automation, it's great while the audio is in Melodyne because I'll hear my effects immediately. But as soon as I sort of want to print it and move it around in the track, I'll need to record out. And what I can do is I can continue to transfer in new audio and create new automation and then render that out to audio and put it in my track. I would treat this as like a sort of a working buffer. A, a space where I would just pump in musical ideas, do automation with them with Melodyne, and then pump them out to other parts of my track. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessing.